If you've been training and you've been submitting yourself to various projects, but you can't seem to find the ones that are really good, it might be time to get an agent. And I'm going to tell you how I found the four of mine that I've had throughout my career. Side note, if you're new here, I'm Venus with Personal Powerhouse. I help Christian actresses build their careers with integrity. So the benefits of having an agent are, um, number one, they have resources that you don't have, or they have access to opportunities that you don't. So they can kind of get behind the scenes and know more about uh, different projects that are upcoming, have different relationships than you have, and they can seek out those opportunities for you. Another one, another benefit to having an agent is negotiations and contracts. I personally don't love this side of it. I can do it if I need to, but it just runs into that weirdness of, oh, we were so excited to work together as buddies. And now we have to talk about terms and payment. And then it's like, just muddy and weird. So like I said, I can do it, but it's really nice to just hand that over to my agent, let her look through everything, um, get some more information on it, and then see what kind of, you know, changes or adjustments can be made that benefit me and the production. So that's just, that's a really big benefit in my book to not have to worry about that anymore. Um, and then the other one is it makes you look like a professional so whenever you're represented by someone, even if you don't love your agency, just the fact that you are signed and represented by an agency, it makes you look good. It makes you look like you are taking your career seriously. So if you were to try to find a new agent, then the fact that you're already represented by someone looks better than being represented by no one. So keep that in mind. Does it cost to have an agent? No, it does not. Agents get paid when you get paid. So what happens is they submit you to projects. Hopefully you are booking work. And then when you get paid from that work, they will take their cut from your, from that, um, from that work. Normally the agent will negotiate with the production company, their percentage. So let's say it's 10%, which it's typically 10% for an agent. Then your agent will say, Hey, I want you to pay my actor. However much, like, let's just go with a hundred dollars. And then you'll pay my agency fee, which is 10%. So production will pay the actor and pay the agent. There are some times where production won't have um, an add-on. They won't pay the agent and that'll come out of the actor's paycheck, which means it'll come from you. So you'll get paid the hundred dollars, but then you'll have to give your 10% to your agent, which is fine. They did the work for you to get you that opportunity. Now there is a Another thing that can happen, and this is where it's important to read your contract, which is when an agent is getting paid by production, so they're getting that 10%, but then they also tell the actor, hey, I need 10% of your paycheck. So they're getting total of 20%, which is called double dipping. Read your contract and see if that's something they do and see if you need to ask or get any clarity around that. As far as it costing to have an agent, one of the agencies that I was with, and I didn't love this, they made us pay $100 a year to be on their website. I don't love that because I don't think that we, the actor, should be responsible for their website fees. That's a cost that they have to incur to have a website, so they should be paying for it. And then I did have an actor friend who every time she wanted to change her headshot on her agency's website, she had to pay for that. And I'm like, why? I'm sure that a lot of the actors didn't want to change their headshot very often I mean, I bet they did, but it's like, why would you ask your actors to do that? I don't understand. So anyway, there's stuff like that. It's not ideal. So look out for that. But for the most part, no, you don't, you don't have like a fee to join an agency. Um, and then, okay, so I'm going to tell you how I found mine. So throughout my journey, I've had four different agents. The first one that I found was uh, from the back of a newspaper. No lie. It was back there. I don't even know what I was looking for, but it said uh, models and actors. It was like an open call. And I thought, okay, well, I don't know. I had just moved to this place. So I thought, well, I'm, I'll just try it out. So I went to their open call and they said, um, oh, I actually went for modeling. And they were like, no, I think you're too short for modeling. We should definitely try acting, which I had never considered. But I did go ahead and try it. I ended up sticking with that agency for a year. So I did get signed. And went to LA and did some workshops and stuff. I would go every weekend to this town, which is like 45 minutes or an hour away. And I would go every weekend to do trainings. And after that year, didn't love it. Didn't, didn't want to do acting ever again. Then I found out later that that agency was actually a scam agency, which is probably why I didn't like a lot of what I did, but it did give me a feel for acting. So I guess that's good. Um, and then fast forward, I, again, like I said, didn't want to do acting, so didn't pursue that for years and years and years. And then 
God told me to do acting. So I moved to Austin, Texas, and that's where I found my next agency. And I was trying to think of how I actually found them. And I think it was from just friends that had been talking about them. I think this agency was kind of new to the area. And so they were signing on people. So I ended up somehow getting a meeting with the woman of the agency and we sat down and talked and I was ready to like do a monologue or whatever. But at the end of our discussion, she was like, I would love to sign you. And I'm like, cool, let's do it. So I signed with them. I don't remember how long. Um, and then out of that came my third agent. So my third agent, actually, I want to say she worked for that second agent and then she broke off and she created her own agency, which is like a little boutique agency. And I don't remember if she invited me to join her or if I asked if I could go with her, but either way, it was a great experience. She was very young, but she was like, she did amazing. Like I, she did so well, so communicative, a lot of opportunities. She was always busting her butt to make sure that we were out there. Um, and I just appreciated her so much. So I loved being with her, but eventually her agency dissolved because she was going to start doing something else, which was honestly perfect timing because I felt like God was um, like pulling me out of acting. And he was asking me to pause my acting at that time. And then my agency dissolved and it was like, wow, well, if that's not confirmation, then I don't know what is. So she dissolved. I didn't look for another agent. I didn't pursue acting. I did have one series that I was doing that I continued to do for, I think it was four and a half or five years that I felt like God had, um, pulled me out of acting, but I did do that, that one series. And then the beginning of 2022, I felt like God was slowly like reigniting that desire to do acting and kind of getting me ready to step back into it. And so I remember telling him, um, and if my light is changing, it's because I'm not using a light, I'm using the window. But I remember telling God, I was like, there are two agencies that I'd love to go with whenever it's time. Like whenever you open that door again, there are two that I would love to go with, but please let me know which one, because I don't, I don't know what lies ahead. And one day, don't lie, this is how I got my agent. Um, I was writing on a post-it note and like a little bitty message, I don't know, four words maybe. And I was trying to write this little bitty phrase. And as I was writing this phrase, I heard the Holy Spirit say, message Jean. And I was like, okay, weird. And so I tried to continue my post-it note and I couldn't continue it because again, I heard message Jean. And I was like, that is so weird. And I'm like, surely I could just write my post-it note. So I tried again the third time to write my post-it note. And I could not remember what I was trying to write. And the third time I heard message Jean. And I was like, okay, I am just going. And this was one of the two agents that I was considering. And so I um, got on my phone and I messaged her. And she wasn't taking submissions. Like on her website, she was closed. But I messaged her. I don't even know if I told her what happened with the post-it note. But um, anyway, I did ask her if she was taking on any new actors. And she was like, absolutely, I'd love to set up a call with you. And then she ended up signing me. And before the ink was even dry, like she had sent me the contract. I needed to sign it and get it back to her. She had already submitted me to a project. I booked it. And I was like, oh my goodness, like talk about confirmation. I, like, that's when I was like, okay, God, <laughs> I heard you right. And this is the step you wanted me to take. And so I have been with her for, and she's amazing. So that's how I found my four agencies. I have always expected to do a monologue. Um, like, I guess, cause I always heard that, that you may have to perform a monologue for agents before they'll sign you but I have not had to do that. I do have some friends though, who, when they submit it to an agent, the agent will send them a, a, a fake audition and see how quickly they can turn it around, um, how good their setup is, how quickly, you know, they can do the files and the slate and like, because everything's online now. And so they are testing the actors to know, can you turn this around in a quick amount of time? Is your audition going to be quality enough that we can bring you on board? And of course they always look at your resume and your training. So keep those in mind too. Um, so that is it. If you end up hitting the like button or the subscribe button, I want to say a big old thank you. And thank you for spending part of your day with me.